Hello, in this video I'm going to talk to you about some tips and tricks that I use while working in the Frame Story Kit or After Effects in general. So let's get started. We're all annoyed when we create shape layers and then have to center their anchor point. Typically, we create a shape layer and then drag the anchor point in the center or control double click on the pan behind tool on the top left. An easy way to get rid of that process is to go to Edit, Preferences, General. In the General tab, you tick the center anchor point to new shape layers. We hit OK. As you can see, now the anchor point is always in the center. Another thing I want to show you is how to copy shape layers from one outfit and paste them to another. In Frame Story, you can mess with a character's clothes or accessories, as long as these layers are not in the character's head compositions. Let me show you what I mean. Say you absolutely wanted this accustomed outfit to have the banker's red tie. Well, what you can do is this. We open the character's composition. We open the composition where the tie is located. In this case, it's torso underscore O1. And then, we copy the shape layer. Then we go back to our main comp and select the accustomed outfit. We head to the torso underscore O1 comp and paste the shape layer that we copied. We get an expression error. Let's fix it. We select the layer. We hit W on our keyboard to reveal the expression properties. And then, in these two parentheses, we just type the name of the outfit we are currently using. In this case, it's accustomed. Problem solved. Now, as I said before, we can totally mess with the character's clothes, as long as they don't belong to the character's head. So let's move it up a bit and change the shape of the layer. Hmm. Let's mess with him a little more. Why not make his sleeves longer? We open the right arm composition. We select the cloth. Hit G on our keyboard. And make it longer. Copy this layer. And let's paste it to the other arm composition. You can correct the layer name if you want to. And there you have it. Now. If we reselect the accustomed outfit, the outfit will be set to normal. So don't be afraid to play around. Now let's see how to make our lives a little bit easier when working with facial expressions. It's always better to be able to view two compositions at the same time instead of switching between the two. Here's how to do it. We click on this little icon to lock this view. Now, if we open the character's expression composition, it will open in another view. What we can do now is we move this view to another place like this. Let me make some space here. We go to our expression mapping by clicking on the Extras Preview button. Now we can change anything we want and preview it in real time, without switching to our main composition. Let's change the mouths. Select, hmm, Smile 1. That's number 18. Or, change the eyes direction. Let's type 4 in here. You can use this method for pretty much every part of your video production. OK, one other thing I want to show you is the Purge Memory and Disk Cache option. In order to save RAM space, After Effects stores data in your disk drive. That can sometimes cause bugs or weird behavior. One very common bug is that the view sticks to a previous moment of your work and then, no matter what you do, it will keep showing that one frame. In order to solve such behaviors, after Effects gives you the option to delete everything that is being cached in your disk drive and RAM. This will refresh everything. To do this, we go to Edit, 
Purge, Purge Memory and Disk Cache. Click OK and it will delete everything that was stored. It's always a good idea to purge all data when you start working on a new project. The last tip I want to give you is to always keep an eye on your RAM space. After Effects is a hungry RAM eater. So when you're working on an After Effects project, it's always good to shut down programs that you're not currently using so that you don't run out of RAM. One other thing you can do is go to Edit, Preferences, Memory, and assign how much RAM you want to reserve for other Adobe applications. That way, if you have, for example, Illustrator open, you won't give it the possibility to use more RAM than the number you assigned. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I will see you in the next tutorial.